Hey everybody, my name is Seppi, and in today's video, we have with us Kong from Godzilla vs. Kong from Playmates Toys, and this is kind of a, a special occasion for me on a couple different levels, I suppose. I, one, have never bought a Playmates toy, and this isn't going to be anything to the quality of like SH Monster Arts or anything, but we will get into how I, how I feel about these toys. And uh, two, I have never had a Kong figure in my life, and I love Kong. Quick... Disclaimer, on the box, there's a couple things that might be considered spoiler-ish, I, I suppose. <laughs> okay, so let's look at the box. It says battle damage reveal, so you can see his arms kind of chunked open, and uh, he's got that little chunk on his arm there. There's his axe. You can see that, you can see the figure here, big old boy. And then it says Monsterverse logo, Kong with battle axe. So the battle axe is something we will talk about soon. We have the Toho, Ling the Toho logo and the legendary logo, and I hope to see those two next to each other for quite some time. And the Playmates Toys logo. Four plus, Choking Hazard, Godzilla vs Kong. Monsterverse, Kong with Battle Axe, not much to see. Oh, also really quickly, up here you can see uh, kind of a new art for that ban that same freaking banner we've been getting for a long time, but new art. I guess this is now the new official banner that we've seen a lot. On to the back. And this is where the spoiler stuff kind of happens. So. We have Kong here with the battle axe. And it says some stuff over here. You can pause that and read that if you'd like. It's a cool pose, battle damage reveal. But on the back, it shows collect them all. And if you look here, we have some figures that you've seen, some that you might not have seen. A really cool addition with the skull crawler. So, um, like having a six inch skull crawler is really cool. And I will get my hands on that and, and show you that soon with the Heave or the Hev, the Hollow Earth anti gravity vehicle. Um, which is something that we will talk about in another video. Who knows what that is? And I, I guess the Hollow Earth is a big part of this film. So very interesting. Also, we have the Warbat with the Osprey. The Osprey is a real vehicle that we have, and they were featured in King of the Monsters. But the Warbat is something we've never seen before, and we've seen this labeled as Nozuki. So um, I guess that's Nozuki or the Warbat, or maybe it's some different version of it, but we have seen that in the leaks from the Playmates toys. So that's the back. Kinda spoilerish. All right, so that is the box. It's a cool box. The blue and orange color scheme, kind of like that cinematic color style, is very noticeable on shelves. And can I just say, it is awesome to see Godzilla and Kong stuff being sold. You can get these things at Walmart. All right, so let's get this big monkey out of the box and look at the figure. Okay, everybody, on to the figure itself. But first, let's address something very important. Look at that thick cake! Dang! All right, so on to articulation and paint application, guys. This will be brief because there's not much going on here, but what's there is pretty good, so let's start. On the shoulder here, it has a swivel hinge joint, so you can move it forward and back, left and right, and same for the elbow, a swivel hinge joint. Over here to the wrist, the wrist is kind of on this, like, rubber, the, the fist is rubber, so it's kind of like on this rubber substitute ball joint, I guess. It doesn't move too much, but it does wiggle a little bit so it wouldn't like snap off or anything. Just be careful. The head swivels all the way around, 360 degrees. You can do it both ways. And moving on to the leg here, all very similar. So let me just get the arm out of the way here. So swivel, hinge joint, left, right, forward, back, and the knee is just a hinge. So you can just move it forward, back. But what's there, like I said, is pretty good. I'm gonna put the accessories here in the articulation segment. The Axe is pretty interesting. I like the coloring on it, and I like how it really stands out from his color scheme. You can take this rubber section of skin off to expose the flesh, kind of gruesome, and this piece, like I said, is, is rubber, and it blends in pretty nicely. And put, the, put that back on the right way. Now, you're going to have to finagle the arm a little bit in certain positions. It, it, it won't click back in, at least on my figure, so you got to kind of move it up and pop it in there and it stays pretty nice. On to colorization. So if we look at the ax here, it's very noticeable. It's nice and blue, kind of like one of Godzilla's spines. We'll see if that happens in the film. The handle is this like bone shape, but it's a nice different type of brown from the overall brown color of the figure. There are certain areas like his pecs here that are a darker kind of like black ashy color. So you'll see that on his chest. His face is a little bit darker of a color here too on his hand. So if you look at like his, his actual digits, those are colored black and his tootsies, black down there too. Cool, so it's subtle, 
but I think the paint application as well. And you can even see here, there's a little bit of shading and, and darker brown, even almost black uh, to make some of the fur pop. The scars are in fact paint. The teeth are obviously like a bone color and the tongue is a pinkish red. It's kind of like a, a really light red, I guess. Um, yeah, so that stands out. And if you look at the eyes here as well, so the eyes have a really deep orange color to it and the pupils are tiny and creepy, but they're staring in the right direction. He's not wall-eyed or cross-eyed, which is nice. I think this figure is pretty fantastic for what you get. When you articulate something, the arms stay where you put them, the legs stay where you put them. Not much articulation, but there is still a, a pretty good range out of the, like if I were to just tell you the amount of joints and what type of joints, you'd be like, that thing's not gonna move at all, but it surprisingly has a pretty good range. And the detailing on the figure is good overall. We'll talk a little bit about that over some pictures in just a second, but as far as articulation and paint application for a $10 figure, this is pretty good bang for your buck. So Arctic and Paint App seem great in my opinion. So the sculpt, I think they did a very good job capturing his musculature and how strong he's gonna be in this upcoming movie with, you know, like the huge lats and, and pecs and everything like that and huge arms just really shows his strength. And it's a solid toy too, it's pretty heavy. I don't know the exact weight, but it, I mean, this thing is pretty solid. I would say my only criticisms are, I wish the fangs maybe were a little bit sharper. They're very rounded, but I, again, it's a kid's toy, so I guess you can't really do too much about that. I would like his head to maybe be a little bit smaller. It seems like it might be too big, but then again, we haven't really seen him in the movie besides that one image on the back of the Godzilla box. There are a couple of the big, bolts that you see kind of holding him together, but nothing too intrusive. I guess if you're doing stop motion animation, you would see those, but uh, you could probably just blur them out anyways. Take a while, but you can do it. But other than that, this looks absolutely fantastic. It feels good. His arms haven't been sagging or anything like that. Really cool accessories, the battle damage. You can get some really cool poses. You can get some really cool pictures, especially if you're into stop motion animation and you want to do uh, some little skits with it. He's very, very good for that for 10 bucks, guys, this is a pretty good deal. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. Do you like this figure? Are you gonna go pick one up from Walmart? Like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.